it's one of those things is over the years there's been a whole bunch of different fads as it were of programming languages they come and go fairly quickly um one day the next Perl was pretty popular throughout the late nineties and early two K. You very you see very little Perl these days. Fortran in the eighties, stuff like that. If you understand programming and you can think your way through a problem, um, and you can approach it from a procedural perspective, then you can probably take that perspective, and that'll help you read another person's code. So if you, I recently for my work at Origin Energy, I rocked on site and discovered that they were using TypeScript to write all their lambda functions. TypeScript is a heavily typed version of JavaScript. I can read JavaScript, but I'm not very good at writing it, but it's a fact that I have a foundation in computing and understand programming languages. So you can read someone else's code, even in another language even, and it puts you in a good place to suddenly start assisting and delivering value for that customer because you're able to tell them, oh, yeah, I understand what this is doing and maybe you should approach it in a slightly different way. And then the next step of that was within a few weeks, I was able to start writing lambdas in TypeScript for the customer. And that was because I had learned how to program in other languages. It's not like a spoken language, which is often difficult to translate. Programming languages are pretty simple. As long as you're happy to spell American, because I've spelled color wrong for so many years, it's just burned into my eyes. Um, first facet of that job was I worked with a partner team, and that partner team had developed a bunch of machine learning models to stack rent maintenance activities on a rail network. So what they did was looked at telemetry of the rail network and worked out how sharp the corners were, what the geography looked like, and how steep the inclines were. And then we're able to extrapolate from that data how fast a train could go from A to B on a perfect day with the perfect weather. And then they got all of the maintenance records that said, oh, there's a speed bump here, or there's a rusty track over there, or there's a buckle here. And they were able to re-add using machine learning each one of these events into the rail network and then calculate how many minutes each one of those events slowed the train down by. And when you talk about if Iron ore is worth 180 bucks a ton. They move a million tons a day. Cool. Getting another minute of train performance turns into 30 or 40 million, 30 or 40 million dollars a minute for us. It's pretty self-explanatory, right? It's just voluminous amounts of data. I think there's some cool statistics in another pack I've read recently talking about just the amount of data we've provided, we've the world's generated in the last three years. It basically eclipses the amount of data that humankind has ever generated, which is scary and awkward all at the same time. Um, I think big data kind of underpins machine learning. So you've got artificial intelligence as a kind of a banner term. Machine learning is a subset of that. And then under machine learning is actually neural networks, which is a different subset again. But the way I see big data is, um, and a lot of companies suffer, suffer with this. I had a discussion with a large freight mover company uh, earlier this week, and this one of the three big points I drove home to them was that data quality has to be king because so many companies for so long generate absolute truck tons of data. They've got literally trucks in a field driving around with GPSs in them, but they've never really used that data for much apart from maybe firing drivers for speeding. But maybe they could use that data to sell to the council to tell them where the speed bumps are or speed potholes are because their trucks are picking up this bump on that same road every week. And maybe there's an opportunity where they can monetize that data and sell it to the council. That's an example of big data. It's, it's about leveraging data and trying to extrapolate value from that. RP data was a really interesting example. Um, they basically have a, one, one for your IT professional in the room, they had an NFS share with 130 million photos on it. Also a very bad pattern, don't ever do that. But <laughs> That's basically, it was like anywhere from one photo to 40 photos of every, every single house in Australia and New Zealand. And you think, oh yeah, what, that's cool and all, and we can use it to sell to real estate agents. But we were able to pivot that and we go, okay, well, let's run some machine learning over it and work out what every single picture is and then we can categorize it. Like, okay, well, turns out we've got like 7 million photos of people's roofs. Cool. Let's identify roofs with a north, northern facing aspect and sell it to solar installers because solar installers want to understand people with great roofs to put solar on. So suddenly you open up this entirely different revenue stream. Uh, definitely. So um, thank you for that question. Uh, the uh, first, Usually we work with a wide variety of customers. You've got big customers like big four banks. You've got small startups doing sweet, exciting stuff like AI, analytics. Some are doing SaaS applications and so on. Uh, a company I've worked with recently uh, was implementing, working in the AI space, 
they're doing online identity verification, um, the, where you can simply jump on your mobile, it's shoot you a link, you open it up, and um, you scan your face, drive a license, uh, they verify your identity, so they look into things like, hey, is that really you, or is that the picture you took of your friend that you're trying to fool us into believing that it's you? Or is this a video? Because you have to mimic uh, like movements. You have to, they ask you to move your face left or move it to the right so that they identify it's you. Some people tend to use video recordings to try and fool the system. That, what excited me about it, or what excites me more about AI is, I'm not sure if you guys are up to speed, but uh, there is a medical research company that is trying to automate X-ray analysis. So instead of having a radiologist looking at your X-ray, uh, the machine learning, by feeding into data set, can um, identify if there are any issues with your lungs. In that case, they were actually focusing on a very specific case. So we have uh, the camera setups uh, and, and linked to the network so that as people are walking through the fulfillment centers, there are uh, the cameras are taking their temperatures and they're making sure that everybody is staying uh, within that, that distance separation. And, and it actually raises an alarm if people get too close in the work environment under the current COVID situation.